We're so delighted to have Pastor Chris Hodges with us today. He's the founder and senior pastor of Church of the Highlands in Birmingham, Alabama. Church is some 25,000 members. In fact, they had over 31,000 in their combined Easter services, but even better than that, over 3,000 salvations. Isn't that great? Can we just praise the Lord for that today? So I want you to get your Bible, get your pen and paper, get ready to take notes, and let's welcome to the pulpit of the Daystar Television Network, Pastor Chris Hodges. Well, I'm so honored to be a part of this show today, and I'm always amazed how God works. You know, I don't know if you know this or not, but uh, I didn't tell Marcus or Joni what I was going to be sharing on, and I didn't even know the song that was going to be sung in this program. And everything that has been said is exactly what I believe God has for you today. It's what I've prepared. In fact, some of the comments Marcus just made are in my notes. I'm just marveling how God works. I want to share a verse of Scripture with you. I want to pray for you so that God will help you to understand it. We need the Holy Spirit's help with that. And then I've just got one simple thing I want you to hear today that can literally change your life. This comes out of 2 Corinthians chapter 1. This is verse 3. It says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion, look at this, and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all of our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we've received from God. For just as the sufferings of Christ flow over into our lives, and maybe you're experiencing that, you need to know that in Christ, our comfort will also overflow. And if we are distressed, it's for your comfort and salvation. If we're comforted, it's for your comfort, which produces in you patient endurance of the same sufferings we suffer. And our hope is firm. I want you to know Daystar's hope for you is firm today, that we know just as you share in what we're suffering, we want you to share in our comfort today. And then he says this. this is a very interesting little verse here. We don't want you to be uninformed. I want you to remember that. We don't want you to be uninformed about the hardships we suffered in the province of Asia. Actually, we were under great pressure, far beyond our ability to endure, so that we despaired even of life, didn't think we were going to live through it. Indeed, in our hearts, we felt the sentence of death. Key phrase here, look, look at this one. But this happened. There's a reason why it happened. That we might not rely on ourselves but on God who raises the dead. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray today for every viewer, every person. There is no doubt in my mind you set up this entire program for them today. And I pray, God, you'd speak by the power of your Holy Spirit to every person right now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You've already heard some of the amazing things that are taking place uh, in our church and Honestly, seeing the same amazing things taking place in my life personally. But as Paul said, I don't want you to be uninformed <laughs> that in the middle of all of those troubles, and uh, I mean, uh, in the middle of all of those great days, I have had absolutely the greatest year of my life over the past year, and I've had the absolute worst year of my life. I mean, it's, it's, it's almost as if as bad, as good as it's been, it's been equally as bad. It's been one of the most difficult. And I think it's so interesting how the Apostle Paul said, look, you see the great things that are happening, but I don't want you to be uninformed. We were going through some difficult times too. And he says, but I've learned some things. I'm receiving some comfort, and I want you to receive that comfort. And, and I just want to tell you very, very, very honestly uh, of, of what I'm learning through some of the struggles. You've heard the, you've heard the great praise reports, but let me tell you about some of the struggles, beginning with the death of both my dad, who was working with us in the ministry, and my father-in-law, who helped us launch the church planning organization, the ARC, both of them in a nine-month period, very, it seemed, prematurely lost their battles with cancer and went to be with the Lord. I mean, struggles that not even church members know about in the church and struggles and difficulties with family members. It's just been a very, very difficult time. And, it, and, and there have been days, honestly, where I thought, you know what, I don't, think I, can, I don't think I can do this anymore. Days, it's interesting, Marcus just said it a moment ago, days when I just felt like giving up. In fact, I've never had that feeling in the past 11 years until recently. Like, I don't think I can do this 
anymore. But God comes along. And I'm in the middle of a comforting process right now. And God is teaching me something that people forget. In fact, I want to share with you one simple little secret. This is my, this is my passion as a pastor. And that is not just to inspire you, not just to say, oh, you can do it. And those are great things. But I want you to also get some what I call practical Christianity, something you can actually, at the end of this program, go and actually do. And this is one simple thing that has helped me receive comfort from God. And here's what it is. Listen to it closely. And that is when something is happening to me, God wants to do something in me. When something is happening to me, God is wanting to do something in me. So, which means that when you're facing something difficult, the actual thing that you're facing can be a distraction of what God is actually trying to do inside of you. So we have to refocus on what's happening in us, not to us. And, and in fact, you can put it in the bank that when any difficulty comes, God's not the author of it, but in the middle of it, he'll turn it around for the good but God has this ability to take that difficult situation and start developing something in you. And he's very committed to it. As I like to say it, God is more interested in your character than he is your comfort. And that's not, that's not a part of God I particularly enjoy. But he, he, is, he is determined to develop me. Now, why that's important? Because a lot of us go through it and all we can focus on is the problem itself. We're almost distracted by it, and we never really even focus on and look at the thing that God is doing in us. And that's why the book of James would say things like, consider it joy when you're facing trials. Well, who does that? Who's, who's rejoicing? What's going on? Oh, man, I'm going through the worst trial of my life. No one does that. Why? Because we're distracted by the problem. He says, consider it pure joy because when you face trials, it's working something in you. It's developing patience inside of you. And again, God is very, very, very committed to that process. And, and you need to know that. So, so you say, well, what, what do I have to do? What do I have to do to make this happen? Well, we have to respond better to our problems. When we're facing something difficult, we, we, we got to realize that our response to our worst days are going to determine our future. And I want you to hear that again. Your response to your bad days is going to determine your future. Even more specific, some of you have been offended by someone. There's unforgiveness. And you can't help it. They really offended you, hurt you. But you're distracted by it. And the Bible comes along and says, you know what? Forgive that person. Let it go. And I'll tell you right now, resentment is a dream stopper. It'll keep you from the best of God. We've got to consistently look past the offense because unforgiveness will leave us really dead in our tracks. That's why I enjoy the Apostle Paul. I mean, he's really a hero. I love, I love the fact that you throw him in prison. I mean, he's, he's going off to preach a crusade. They throw him in prison. He said, you know what? God will use this to advance the gospel. And we have some of the most beautiful books of the Bible today because Paul had a bad day. He got thrown in prison. He writes the book of Philippians, one of the most encouraging books of the Bible because he, his plans didn't work out. He was thrown in prison. In fact, he had this attitude that, that, you know what, God's working in me. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get it. Stop looking at the problem itself and focus on what the Lord wants to do. He says, well, that's good. You're going to lock me up? Great, I'll, I'll do a little writing. Well, then if you're going to still be positive, we'll kill you. He said, that'd be great too. Because I, I had this dilemma to live as Christ and to die as gain. I can't really figure out which one's better. So that would settle my dilemma. What do you do to a person who's always going to redirect the trouble that you face to what God wants to do on the inside of us. And I just want to encourage you today. I, I just want to encourage you that not to get bogged down in the endless why. In fact, let me just say something to you. The best question, or better yet, the best prayer you can pray to God isn't why, it's what. Not, not why, why, God, why did this happen, God? Better, better prayer, God, what do you want to do inside of me? What, what's the work you're doing inside? What do you want to teach me through this. And, and, and as Marcus said, I have it right here in my notes. Hang in there. Because God's doing a work inside of you. In fact, the rest of the, the chapter, picking up right where we left off in 2 Corinthians, look at these last two verses. Paul went on to say, he said, He has delivered us 
from such a deadly peril, and he will deliver us. And on him we have set our hope that he will continue to deliver us. Look at this. As you help us by your prayers. And that's why we have the number on the bottom of the screen right now. Then many will give thanks on our behalf for the gracious favor granted us. In answer, look at this, to the prayers of men, many. And that's what we want to do today. And Marcus is going to join me over here. And we're going to pray for you. And we're going to trust God for whatever you're facing, the difficulty. My, my encouragement to you is get your eyes off of the problem itself. Don't let it be a distraction. Instead, focus on what God wants to do in you. And then let us pray with you. Let the prayers of many deliver you from that deadly peril. And God will certainly do it. Isn't that right? It is so true, Pastor Chris Hodges. This is a great opportunity for you because thousands of people across America and around the world can join in prayer with you. If you haven't gotten that prayer in, while the Daystar singers are singing, someone here needs this prayer. I believe that someone is you today. God has let you see this program and he's brought this great man of God, this pastor, this shepherd who loves people to encourage you. And you know, sometimes you have to encourage yourself. That's what David did. He got discouraged. The Bible says David encouraged himself in the Lord. Sometimes when I get discouraged, I, God says, well, do you believe what, you're, what you preach? I'll just start preaching a little bit to myself. There you go. Or put a good tape on or praise and worship music and just get caught up in the presence of the Lord. So if you need prayer, go to that phone, dial that number, and let us pray with you. And Pastor, one more time, mention about the Grow uh, conference that's coming up. Yeah, they could just go on to growleader.com, growleader.com. It's coming up at the end of July, first two days of August, and we'd love to do anything we can to be a blessing to you. So that's for churches that are less than a thousand. You want to help train and mentor and encourage them to break that right. barrier, that thousand barrier. Yeah, and not to be any size, but to reach their potential.